Ritual Superfoods, Canadian Special. What do I mean by Canadian Special? Hmm, you're gonna like this one, so stick around to find out. If you are new to this channel, my name is Marius Konieczny. I run Microcap Explosions, a website dedicated to microcap stocks, which are ignored and underfollowed by the investment industry. I also wrote 10 books on investing, one of which is available for a free download at microcapexplosions.com. Recently, I also created valueinvestinguniversity.com, which is a free resource to make you a more intelligent investor. Ritual Superfoods. It's a Canadian special. What do I mean by a Canadian special? If you followed me for a while, you know that I like to invest in microcap stocks. That's what microcap explosions is all about. And because the United States doesn't have a uh, venture exchange, exchange for early stage companies, US does have OTC, but OTC over the market is not an exchange. So a lot of US investors that are interested in smaller companies, microcap companies, go to Canada because Canada has Canadian Stock Exchange and Canada also has Toronto Stock Exchange Venture, TSXV. And because of how, for example, TSX Venture was formed, it was formed through a merger of several different exchanges. One of them was oil and gas, one of them was mining, one of them was technology, and I think bio or something like that, I forgot. So investors on those exchanges, so let's just say, let's just use Canadians, even though, even though US people go there too. They are interested in gold, silver, mining, oil and gas, cannabis, anything but a bad business. Like bad businesses, they're, good businesses, they're not interested in. Awful businesses, yeah, we go for it. So I always make fun of it that Canadians are interested to get high on pot and they're looking for gold. And today I'm going to expand that and say they like to get high on pot, they're looking for gold, and then, then when they get anxious, then they eat a bunch of mushrooms to calm down. Because that's what Ritual Foods is all about. But with, without going any further, I just want you to listen to this short introduction of Ritual Superfoods by another YouTuber. So have a listen. Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're having a fantastic day today because today we're going to be talking about Ritual Superfood stock because we just have some crazy news coming out from this company over the past month or so. So without further ado, for those who aren't familiar with the company, we've talked about them a few times on the channel. Basically, they just make three products. They're functional mushroom adaptogen. So they got the uh, chaga, reishi, and the lion's mane. So the chaga is the immune system booster. The reishi is the reishi relax. And then we have the lion's mane, which improves cognitive ability, focus, uh, that sort of thing. And these are all backed by clinical studies. I looked into this before. Um, I actually um, you know, decided to, to dabble into the products and to make these videos. It is legit. There are clinical studies that I have talked about in the past backing and supporting uh, the thesis behind the claims behind these, these products. They are all are USDA certified and organic. So uh, the products are phenomenal. We also have David Kerbel, the CEO, who got a lot of experience in consumer packaging goods. And so he just recently founded this company. He was leaving his other companies. He worked at Celsius Holdings. He was a big factor in uh, their massive growth that they had in the past like decade or so. So he's coming over from the consumer packaging good industry. He sees an opportunity here in the functional mushroom adaptogen space. So that's where he sort of wants to build his own company, grow his himself. Um, and it, he's been doing a fantastic job. I mean, the amount of progress that they have made in such a short amount of time. I mean, the company just went public back in March uh, and they've already gotten so much stuff done, which we're going to be hitting all throughout this video. OK, so fantastic story, right? We all need mushrooms because we all need, you know, calm down and relax, right? We all need mushrooms. So fantastic product. The company goes public in uh, February 2021, right? As an opportunity. And we have a, you know, a nice looking product, right? Consumer packaged good product, a premium brand. The CEO knows what he's doing. And by the way, the CEO has already been replaced. And let's look at the chart. If you look at the chart, the stock is down more than 90%. Congratulations. Congratulations to the management. But you know what? I'm not blaming the management because I'm blaming the stupid idiots that invested in it, okay? And here's why. You see, I see this so many times. Investors, microcap investors, they go and they want to make all this money and they have no idea what they're doing. 
they are clueless. They are clueless as to what they should look for in businesses, okay? Like I said so many times, if I want to lose money, I don't need to go to a microcap exchange to lose a lot of money. I can do it on NASDAQ. Like there's perfectly fine all four companies on NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange because an investment bankers will take any trash public as long as they get fees. It doesn't matter. Like I can go there to lose money. I don't need to go to Canada. I don't need to go to TSXV. I don't need to go on Canadian Stock Exchange to lose money. I can do it perfectly fine in the US. If we think about something like this, people were so hyped up about it. And how do I hear about uh, ritual supervotes? Because I heard about it that apparently some investors that were involved in Oracle were also involved in ritual superfoods. And I was like, you know, hey, take a look at this. And I looked at it and I was just like, this is ridiculous. So, okay, let's walk through the business because that's why I always tell you guys, understand the business, please understand the business. Forget about the hype, forget about what the CEO is saying, understand the business or you will lose all of your money in these stocks. So we have a consumer packaged good mushrooms okay let's think about what would it take for us to make it all right we're gonna make those mushrooms we're gonna package it we're gonna make it ourselves or we're gonna hire somebody to make it for us we put it in a nice package and we're gonna sell it how can we sell it well we can go directly to to the consumer right we can sell it on our website we can go and sell it through partners like we can put it in stores, retail stores, for example, or, or even retail websites. But in order to get to the stores, we need distribution, right? But distribution costs money, okay? So you have to make the product, most likely a product like this, consumer, consumer packaged goods don't have high margins. They just don't. And ritual superfoods cannot even at this point make a gross profit on producing it, which is okay. I mean, probably if they get a bigger size, they will be able to make a profit. But those products never make high profit margins. Never. So that's to begin with, right? And then you have a situation that this is in a very, very competitive industry, okay? You have so many brands coming on, on the market all the time. Healthy ice creams, smoothies, this, th I mean, so many people, so many mothers and fathers at home be like, hey, I made this drink. Why don't I sell it and distribute it? That's why companies like Coca-Cola and Pepsi are so strong because it's so difficult for new brands to come in and steal market share, right? But this doesn't stop people from coming up with all kinds of stuff, whether it's mushrooms or yogurts or this or that, like, they they have ideas, right? So this is just an idea. And you see, this is a very hard business, okay? It, it's a hard business because you begin with very low margins, okay? And then if you choose to sell it through retail stores, you have to hire a distributor, okay? You have to hire a distributor to distribute for you. So that even takes more from your margin. Right? You have to pay the distributor to put you into the stores. So now imagine, imagine for a second that you are put into CVS because this company was saying they're going into CVS. They have, as of now, um, you know, 8,000 retail locations and the stock is down 90%. Imagine yourself, you have this thing and they put you into CVS. Do you think you're going to get a good a shelf space in CVS? I don't think so. And not only this, you have to pay for the shelf space. Before you sell any products, you have to pay for the shelf space. And who's going to pay for it? You, the shareholder, is going to pay for it. So you have to pay for the shelf space. And then when you send the material, the, the inventory, to CVS or any other partner, your retail partner doesn't take any risk. In other words, you have to send them the inventory and they don't pay you. They're only going to pay you if it sells. And then they're going to pay you like 90 days later. If it doesn't sell, they send it back to you. Does it sound like a good business? Does it sound like, hey, I want to get involved in this. I want to pay for the shelf space. Um, then I want to 
uh, produce all the inventory and get paid late and if it doesn't if it doesn't sell they ship it back to me and I have to pay for shipping by the way they're not gonna pay for the shipping right it doesn't sound like a great business to me and the reality is that how do you think it's gonna succeed in the retail locations do you think the retailers are gonna push your product Pff, are you kidding me they have thousands of other SKUs that they are pushing the last thing they want is to push your product, okay? Your product will only be successful in that store if you put a ton, a ton of marketing into this to drive foot traffic into the store. You see, people think that when they are in retail stores, because those retail stores have foot traffic, they're gonna get all these sales. No, the stores are gonna carry your product only if you create foot traffic for them. If you don't create foot traffic for them, they're gonna throw you out or your product is not gonna sell very much. So you begin with low margins. Then you have to give something to the distributor. Then you have to pay for the shelf space. Then you have to send them the inventory that they might send back to you. And then you have to plow so much money into marketing to create foot traffic. Does this sound like a great business? To a lot of the microcap investors, this sounded like a wonderful business. That's why they're down 90 something percent because they have no idea about anything related to business. They just listen to wonderful presentations from the CEO, listen to like, ah, we're gonna be in 5,000 stores. That's actually horrible because the more stores you're gonna be in, the more shelf space you have to pay for, the more marketing you have to pay for, the more inventory you have to produce and spend your own money, that's horrible. The best thing that they would have done is if they actually sold it just on their website because then they can just produce as much as they want to and then sell as much as there's demand. They wouldn't be drained out of cash, but now to sell directly to consumers or even to sell directly through retailers a brand like this it would be a good idea if they had social media following don't you think i mean you create so much social media following you bring uh, you expose the brand so that people wherever they live they can go and they can see the product and demand the product from the local retailers so let's have a look at what kind of social media a ritual superfoods have. Let's start with Facebook. 166 followers. No, 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 not 166,000, 166 followers. Let's look at YouTube. 11 subscribers. Does this sound like a great social media following? Let's have a look at Instagram. I'm actually surprised that they have 34,000 followers on Instagram. I'm surprised considering what I saw on Facebook and, and YouTube. Okay, that's a good start. That's a good start. But I would say a company like this, in order to be successful, I would suggest that they focus on building a social media platform. Forget the retailers, focus on that, build a brand, and then maybe when you have the brand awareness, you can go out into the retail space, which is very hard. But that's a mar much more responsible way of doing it than to raise money from investors, tell them the story and make them lose 90% of the money. But again, I'm not blaming the management. I'm blaming the stupid investors that believing in the story and blindly investing in something like this because, oh, I just, I just got high on pot and I got anxiety and you know, I took mushrooms and it made me feel good. What a great business model. No, just because you like mushrooms doesn't mean it's a, it's a great business model. And if you look at the financials, you can see that there is negative gross profit margin because they don't have any sales, okay? Nobody at the retail locations is going to push the product without them spending a ton amount of money on marketing. And as you can see from the income statement, they spent a ton of of money on marketing and some kind of consultation. Who knows what this is on consultation. But the bottom line is that the management raised the money from gullible investors and then promised them excitement. Oh, we're gonna be at 8,000 stores. 
it doesn't matter. And then they lost 80%. No, they lost 90%, more than 90% of their money. And you see, this business model reminds me of book publishing, actually. And as you know, I published 10 books. So make sure you get some of them. Maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you, you won't invest in a stupid ritual soup, superfoods after re, you read some of my books. It's much cheaper. It's only 20 bucks per book versus whatever amounts of money you invest in these companies that want to drain you out of your savings. But it's similar to book publishing. How is this similar? Okay, every first time author, they want to be in the bookstores, okay? They want to be in the bookstores because that's, or, or at least that's, that, that was in the past. They wanted to be in the bookstores because if they're in a lot of bookstores, they're going to make a lot of money. And it's the same thing. So let's say I want to publish a book. I have to publish a book through a publisher, right? Then they give me, the publisher takes a big cut, right? Because they're going to get me into the bookstore. And then when they get me into the bookstore, because let's say I have no social media following. What kind of shelf space do you think I'm going to get at a bookstore? I'm going to be in like the corner that nobody's going to see, right? My book is not going to sell anything. And yet I have to give publisher everything. And then I'm responsible for marketing. So even though I get like $1 per book, I'm responsible for the marketing because I'm responsible to generate traffic for the bookstore. So what's the point of being in the bookstore? But that's the same model, exactly the same. I want to be in a retail space because, because there's food traffic and I, 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 we're going to make so much money. We're going to be in 8,000 locations. We're going to be, make all this money. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I mean, only, only investors that had absolutely no idea about business fall for this kind of crap. And you see, what amazes me about this is that through the grapevine, I actually heard that some of the people that are in this stock, Ritual Superfood, had some nonsense to actually say about Voxter, okay? So they have this opportunity, Voxter and Ritual Superfoods. And then they go with, they go with Ritual Superfoods. And then they look at Voxter and they're like, oh, Voxter has too many shares. Like, this is what I'm talking about. They are so clueless, they cannot tell the difference between a failure in the making versus a super business that has, that's about to change their life. They can't tell the difference. and. That's why it's so important to understand businesses. Forget the stock market. Forget studying the charts. Forget studying the float and this and that. Study the businesses. Understand how businesses operate. If you are involved in a particular business and you don't know about that business, study the business. There's so many articles and YouTube videos about the business. Figure out just Google consumer packaged goods and read articles and you will find out how hard, how hard this business is. And you will find out quickly to run away from it. But no, it's better to believe in the hype. It's better to listen to interviews on YouTube that is funded by the, by the IR and the YouTubers are getting paid to interview the CEOs and to tell whatever, whatever the story needs to be told. That's not the way to make money. Study the business, figure out, put yourself in the shoes of the business and figure out if I was making this product, how hard would it be to make it successful? It's no different here. This is a tough business. It is, oh my goodness, labor intensive, capital intensive, every low margins, no recurring revenues, maybe some repeat business because People need to take mushrooms to calm down. Yeah, so I give them that. No brand awareness at this point. It's obvious from their social media network. If you studied this, if you just Googled some articles, you would have known. But, you know, instead, they just went for the hype and lost all this money. I hope this was educational. I hope it opened up your eyes a little bit. You don't need to go to the microcap space to lose money. You can do it perfectly fine in NASDAQ. Go to this space to look for super businesses. Go there to find great businesses with great margins, recurring revenues, with great future that are trading for very low prices. You can't get that on NASDAQ. You cannot because those super businesses trade for very high valuations. You have an opportunity to change your life. Don't waste it on trash. That's it. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, share the video, and tell me what you thought about this video.